the Death Corps of Krieg. A regiment renowned and feared for its disregard for human life, or life in general really, and rock solid faith in the God Emperor of Mankind. Although usually deployed in the thousands with nothing more than a last gun and a shovel, this time we are looking at a highly specialized squadron of Kriegers. A kill team for the gruesome war zone that is the system of Octarius. In today's video, I want to show you guys how to paint your Krieg kill team quickly and effectively, while simultaneously achieving a high painting standard. All of the techniques are beginner friendly and won't need much experience to be replicated on your own models at home, so you'll be able to have your squad ready to be deployed in no time. Speaking of said squad, we've got one weapon specialist with a beautiful plasma gun, one explosive specialist, one spotter, a zealot, one medic or quartermaster, and a bunch of regular soldiers, all being led by a sergeant with a bolt pistol and an energy sword. All of them are masterfully casted in plastic and are ready built and primed black. This video is going to be a little bit longer than usual, as these minis have a lot of details and equipment that we need to tend to, so without wasting any more of our precious time, let's get going. First off, a few words regarding the construction of these minis. My friend JD, who lent me these minis to paint, magnetized the weapon options of the weapon specialist. But you don't necessarily have to do this if you, for example, favor the sleek plasma gun anyway. A thing that I definitely urge you to do though, is to keep the backpacks of each Kriegsman detachable, as it makes the painting process a lot easier and allows for quicker techniques. For our explosive specialist, this means leaving the left arm away altogether, as his hand is attached to his backpack, but we will come back to that later. Okay, now we come to the actual painting process. For the base of our operations, we'll start off with a big brush and a healthy portion of mustard yellow. As we don't have to worry about anything else, we can just go ham on these trench coats, schlubbing the paint onto the cast with quick and heavy handed strokes. We don't aim for a clean coverage here, so it's totally okay if some of the black primer is still poking through. The only thing we want is to get the paint on all of the trench coats and don't miss any spots. And just like that, we get ourselves a squad of steel legionaries. <laughs> not bad but also not what we want. Moving on, we take a dark green of any kind and dry brush the yellow coats with it. You sweep it in quick, light motions over the model, catching only the raised parts like folds for example, and leaving the base colors in the recesses. Usually, you'd really want your brush to be as dry as possible for the step, but in this particular step, it's okay to have it a little moist, as we only want to leave the yellow in the deep recessors. The result should look something like this. Now we come to the actual color we want our trench coats to have. Take a very light, almost neon green, and repeat the previous step all over. This time we should definitely use a dry brush though, and focus our brush strokes on the edges and folds especially to really make them stand out. I'd also recommend using a brush with sturdy bristles when doing this. If the paint smudges all over the area, just like you can see here, the bristles are either too soft or too moist and the technique won't work. In both cases, you should pick a different brush, or wait a bit to have it dry properly. For the helmet, we want to use the same bright green, but this time, we just apply it regularly. Now, as much as this stands in stark contrast to the trench coats, and the Kriegers now look very much like construction workers, 
This is exactly what we want for now. So don't worry, we'll knock the brightness down later. Okay, having the green all done, we move to a pale beige and paint the belts on their backs, as well as the rebreather packs on their front. These are easy to reach on most of them, but sometimes their weapons can definitely get in the way. Good thing at least the weapon specialist has this weapon magnetized. We also use this khaki to paint their gloves, their masks, as well as the bandages above their boots, before taking a pale brown to paint their trousers. The trunk on their masks also gets painted with this as well. And if you've got one of your soldiers wielding a mace, we want to paint the shaft of it with this color too. After that it's our true metallic metals time to shine. Taking a dark silver, we start with painting their pauldrons, carefully avoiding the green trench coats. We also want to paint the inside of their rebreather silver, as well as many other parts, like for example the weapons of the sergeant and the barrels of each of their rifles. There are actually quite a lot of parts that I touched up with this dark silver, but we don't have to go over them in detail. Lastly we take a finer brush and paint the connection of their trunk and the frames for their glasses with it. After all of that, we switch to a rich brown and paint the belts going around their waist, though you could definitely also use the khaki from earlier here. Regardless, use this brown for the stock of their rifles the receiver of the magazine, as well as the belts some Kriegers carry their weapons with. The boots also get painted with this rich brown. Now it's time for a bit more colour on these guys, as we take a blue tinted dark grey to paint the other parts of their rifles. Here we can have it very easy when painting the coils. When you only take a bit of paint and flatten the tip of your brush, you can just pull it across without spilling into the recessors. If you do spill some paint in between the coils, it's not the end of the world though. Now it gets a little finicky as we take a bright orange and carefully paint their glasses. You don't necessarily need such a fine brush as I'm using here, as I mainly just use it so you guys can see anything. Okay. Now we take an orange gold and quickly touch up the buttons on their trench coats, meaning of course the ones in the front, but also the ones on the side and back, which can very easily be forgotten. The Kriegsmen themselves are basically done, but they are not complete without their backpacks, or rucksacks in this case. To paint these easily, I'd recommend to take advantage of the pre-drilled hole and mount it on a toothpick or similar, so you can freely move it around without obstructing your brush or touching the fresh paint. First we start with the same pale khaki from earlier, and paint the main rucksack and the belts holding the additions in place. One coat might not be enough to fully cover up the black primer, so leave it to dry and then paint a second thin coat over it. Once the main rucksack is finished, Take a medium dark grey and paint what I'd consider to be a blanket or sleeping bag rolled up on top. Be careful to not paint over the small khaki belts though, and maybe switch to a finer brush for the lower ends. For the can on the bottom, we take a dark green, just like the one we used as a base for the trench coats. We repeat these steps a few times over, and quickly get all six of our backpacks finished. These are just the basics though, and I quickly want to guide you through the painting of the special equipment as well, starting off with our medic or quartermaster and his bag of medical supplies. Here we just do the same as in the official color scheme, and paint the bag completely in a bright white. For the handles, we can just take a true metallic silver. Next is the zealot, again, quite a simple task. For the cover of the book, you can take any color that you like. I'm going for a red with some brown mixed in. Then we turn to the pages and take a small brush to paint them in a very light beige, before taking a true metallic gold to paint his prayer beads. 
the weapon options of the weapon specialist are quite awkward to work with, as you need to hold the melter on the little cable, and the plasma gun can best be held on the one hand on the trigger. Both weapons get their casing painted in the same bluish grey as we use for the rifles. Then we take a true metallic brass for the muzzle of the melter, but switch to a true metallic silver for the muzzle of the plasma gun, as well as various other parts on both weapons. Last but not least, we paint the gloves in our usual khaki, for which it is of course okay to hold the guns on their dry casing. Leaving these two alone for now, we come to the radio of the spotter. Here we start by painting the whole thing in a dark green. After that's dry, we paint the belts holding the cannon or light khaki, before taking a silver paint to pick out the patch and the antennas. For the remaining buttons, we can take a few fun colors. I'm using a bright red and a bright orange. And lastly, we have our explosive specialist and his utility backpack. Instead of our pale khaki, I went for the rich brown, as I thought that only a full leather backpack could hold this much stuff without breaking apart. For the cable clipper we take a true metallic silver, and for the round bomb we can use a dark green, which we can also use for the two grenades. For the cable itself, I went with our brownish red again. The rest is quite self-explanatory. For a small box, use the dark green again, and then pick up the details with silver. Okay. I know it's all quite a lot, but we're almost there. For the actual plasma on the plasma gun, I went with a Bordeaux red this time. Here we don't only paint the coils, but the exhausts in the muzzle and the holes in the casing too. After that, we take a brighter red and paint it again, this time close to the edges, leaving the upper part of the coil still Bordeaux. Here it is totally okay to spill a bit onto the casing, as it will just look like a glow effect. To get our hot energy effect, we first take a pale orange and paint it even lower on the coils, as well as dot it in the middle of the muzzle, and then do basically the same thing again, but this time with a really bright orange. And just like that, we got ourselves a nice looking plasma gun, quite unusual in red but I think it just fits this regiment. All of the Kriegers are finally fully painted up, and with the attached backpacks, we even have our explosive specialists rearmed. But they do still be looking a bit rubbish at this point, don't they? They lack depth, and kinda look a bit unclean. Good thing that there's just one last step we need to take to conclude this speed painting. Take a big brush and a healthy amount of black wash and just absolutely go to town on these minis. Be quick, especially on the larger areas of the coats, to prevent tight marks from building up. We really want to establish some dark shadow to bring out the finer details, for example the light folds of their backpacks. If it pulls too much in some areas though, just keep brushing to spread it out to your liking, though I would advise you to leave the helmet still heavily covered. The only thing we don't want to wash is the white bag of our medic. For this I recommend to use the contrast paint Apothecary White by Citadel, as it leaves much milder shadows and just complements white a lot better than a regular wash. As we leave the models to properly dry, we can use the time efficiently to prepare the bases, starting off by laying the foundation with Citadel's texture paint Sterland Mud. Now, you of course don't have to do this, but I had a few pieces of cork laying around, so I glued them onto the base like rocks. After the paint is dry, we take some light ochre and dry brush it over, before finishing it up with another dry brush of bright orange for a nice Martian-esque finish. The rocks get painted like regular sandstone, getting a pale khaki as their base color and a light beige dry brush for more texture. Then we just paint the trims in a smooth pitch black 
before calling the speed paint officially done. Now, before we get to the results, I want to mention that I took one of the Creek's men out and painted it separately while having a timer running. I always really like to do this, as it allows me to test the speed of my own, well, speed paint, as painting these minis while having a camera between me and the model always takes a lot longer than just painting it. I also quickly want to use this chance to apologize for the lack of videos lately. The reasons for that are, for one thing, that I have two other videos already fully prepared, but then changed my mind on releasing them. I will release them, but after this one. Secondly, I picked up a small job, which now takes quite a bit of my time and I still have to adjust to that. But no worries, I'm very sure that I'll be able to return to my usual upload schedule of one video every six days in Orktober. Speaking of time, it took me one hour, three minutes and thirty seconds. Nice. To paint one Kriegsman and even though I'm very happy with that, I have to recognize that this was just a basic soldier and that you might need a little longer for the more specialized troops. Regardless, I still think that roughly one hour for these guys is not all that bad, especially not when considering the results we're left with. The dry brushing technique on the trench coats resulted in a nice rough texture, and as it was so easy and quickly to apply, it's definitely a contender for a technique to experiment with in the future. All things considered, I think you can paint these guys from start to finish in a single weekend, or a couple of evenings and rainy afternoons. Even though you might want to think about splitting them up into two batches of five to stay sane. <laughs> if you want to put a little more time into these guys, or are just curious about interesting ways to quickly spice your models up in general, I invite you to just stay a little longer, as I want to use the next few minutes to show guys a few optional slightly more tedious steps on how to even further upgrade these already awesome looking minis. Although I am a fan of a more grimdark style, I do like my models to stand out when they're deployed. For this, we take the same light green as we used for the dry brush and pick out all of the folds on their trench coats. This way, we bring a lot of color back onto the mini without having to paint the whole thing all over again and it also helps greatly to define the features of the minis a lot better. Yet, you shouldn't overdo this step by highlighting too many details and just stay with the most prominent parts. On the helmet, we do basically the same, highlighting the edges and the top areas, while still leaving a dark circle around the ridge. After the green, it's time to take the pale khaki again. With this, we highlight all of their backpacks, especially the edges and also the mild folds. We also use this color to pick out the individual fingers of their hands and the carcasses of their rebreathers. If you've got a fine brush and steady hands, you can also highlight the front of their masks. The last thing we need to do to really be done with our average Krieger is to take a very light grey and highlight the blanket on their rucksacks. Now we just need to take care of some details. Taking that orange gold from earlier again, we pick out all of the metallic parts on their backpacks. Then we take a normal gold and pick out the aquila on the fronts of their helmets. Originally, I wanted to paint all of them white, and to show how that would have looked like, I gave the sergeant a white one. Whatever you want to go with, I would still recommend painting the aquilas on their cans with this bright white, as it makes for a sweet detail on the otherwise quite uninteresting backs. Okay, now we come to their special equipment again, starting off with some bright white highlights on the Quartermaster's medical bag. Next off is the Zealot's book. Here we highlight the pages with a very light beige, and then take a fine brush and black paint to carefully paint some black lines of writing, which, pro tip, goes a lot easier when you don't have a camera between you and your model. After that, we come to the weapon specialist and his melter. Take a red wash 
and paint about three quarters of the muzzle with it. After that's dry, take a blue wash and paint one half with it, leaving a bit of the red wash still untouched. Lastly we take a black wash to cover the very end of the muzzle, and voila! We got ourselves some heated metal. Finally, we really want to spice up the energy sword of our sergeant, for which I'll take heavy inspiration from Juan Sanz on Instagram again. We start off by painting the blade in a dark red. Then we take two slightly brighter reds and paint it more towards the hilt, always leaving a bit of the previous color towards the tip untouched. After the red, we switch over to orange and continue, deliberately letting a bit of the paint spill into the groove. At the very end we take a bright yellow, and to make it look really hot, we finish it up by painting a streak of pure white directly around the edges of the hilt. For the edges of the blade, we just take some of that bright orange again. And with this amazing looking energy sword, we are finally done with all of the extras. Before we come to the final results, I took the Krieger from last time and applied all of the upgrades while having a timer running again. Here I just quickly want to mention that one of my friends, Alice from Ataraxia Painting Studio, also just released a painting guide for these very Kriegers. So make sure to check out that video too, and take your favorite advice from the both of us. As for these upgrades, if you have the time, I think the result you'll be left with is well worth the extra effort, especially considering that it only takes about half an hour to apply most of them, roughly 20 minutes for just the green highlights. Ah, didn't quite get it this time. But with that, we're done! The whole kill team of the infamous Death Corps of Krieg is fully painted up to an awesome game and battle ready standard. Even though I was quite skeptical when I first saw it, I think the green color scheme really checks out, and I'm glad to have tried it. I had a lot of fun getting to paint these guys, and I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video just as much. As always, I'll have a full guide listing all of the exact paints that are used for this paint job down in the description of the video. And should you have any questions, maybe a couple of suggestions, be my guest and share them in the comment section. I also want to wholeheartedly thank my friend JD for letting me paint these minis for this tutorial. Without him, I would have not been able to do the speed painting tutorial, so I'm really happy that he decided to get the box set and share his minis with me. Thanks a lot, JD. On a side note, I'd definitely be down to create a speed painting video for the other classic color scheme as well, and if you guys know where I could get this kill team cheap, or even just borrowed, please let me know in the comment section. The next videos for this month will again be speed paints for the last heroes of the cursed city, and hence they are already prepared, they will all come out this month. As next up will be the Orktober, for which I've already planned a lot of very exciting stuff to celebrate it properly. And if you would like to see what I'm talking about, feel free to hit the subscribe button. As I am really looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Until then, take care.